Why did God allow the Satan to live in the Garden of Eden, even if it was in rebellion against him? Yeah. He could have said, get out, get don't out be in here. the garden. Yeah, that's yeah. right. Okay. Yeah, so there's multiple puzzles um, at work in the, the snake. One thing to clarify, the snake is not called the Satan in that story. Right. Um, that's a title that's going to come to be associated with this arch rebel, spiritual rebel, later on in the Hebrew Bible. Um, so we'll just call it the snake. Okay. Um, so there's, you know, two options. One is that the snake uh, had uh, its own rebellion and that that story is not narrated in Genesis, but it's presumed. And then you get the backstory later on in the, in the Bible. Um, another possibility is that Genesis 3 is telling you the rebellion story of the snake and the humans simultaneously. Mm, that is his rebellion. That it's the fall of the snake yeah. <laughs> and the fall of uh, Adam and Eve in the same story. Um, and I actually think that's, uh, hmm. there's uh, some ec textual details that point in that direction. For example, the snake is um, introduced as the beast of the field and it's arum in Hebrew. Crafty. Well, it gets translated crafty, but if you do a word search on arum in the Hebrew Bible, it's like under 10 other occurrences. And it's always a positive trait of being um, smart and sh shrewd mm. is sometimes perceptive. Yeah. It's it, not far from the word for wisdom. C correct. In other words, it's used a lot in the book of Proverbs and it's a positive straight trait to be our room. Yeah. Um, so the snake is introduced in the first sentence with a positive wisdom trait. Mm. It's, it's a, it's a perceptive, clever creature. Mm. Um, and, What's interesting, that uh, he's called, said, Arum mikol um, um crafty more than all the beasts of the field. Mm -hmm. What he ends up is being, Arur mikol habehimot, cursed more than all the beasts of the mm, field. No so within play. the course of the narrative, he goes from being Arum to Arur, mm. more than all the beasts. And I think that's uh, oh. the literary it's design. It's Breaking Bad. Yes, yeah, totally. He's yeah. a good creature gone bad. Yeah. Um, so this presumes what is the creature. Um, in the video, we draw a whole bunch of design patterns from all over the Hebrew Bible that point in the direction of that snake being a, a spiritual being in disguise, namely one of the cherubim slash seraphim. Yeah, so if the garden was a place where all of God's creatures lived, yeah. Yeah. Where, where the humans were meant to rule, correct? Um, then it wouldn't be strange to have mm one of the cleverest yeah. creatures there. <laughs> All the creatures are there. Yeah, yeah, the cherubim are there. We, Cher we yeah. meet them at the end mm -hmm. of chapter three. We know their garden. So Adam and Eve are hanging out with- With creatures. With, with heavenly creatures that surround the divine throne. And earthly creatures. And earthly creatures. That's the picture you get. Heavenly creatures, earthly creatures, overlapping, God's space, our space together. That's the garden. So, yeah. so from that perspective, God, isn't like, I know this guy's trouble, but I'm gonna let him in. Yeah. It's like, yeah. no, he's just part of God's good creation. Yeah. And, and, uh, and so this is key, because uh, sometimes the, the Satan figure um, is talked about as if he is essential evil and not, has always been so. Uh, okay. So the story portrays him as a fallen creature, just like the humans are going to be fallen creatures. Yeah. He's a rebel, hmm. um, just like um, human beings are rebels. And so why did God allow the snake in the garden? Well, why did God allow humans in the garden? Because <laughs> right. he wants to partner with other creatures yeah. to rule heaven and earth together. And we're given a story of a twin rebellion mm. of a spiritual being and a, 